Hello and welcome to today's concept of current and magnetism wherein we shall be understanding about the inverse square law of force in magnetism. Right. Now to understand this concept, let us first of all like take an example and with the help of the example we could better understand it. Say for example over here lies a circular current carrying conductor and now if this is, a, is say for example a circular current carrying conductor and say like the current is flowing like this we know that if this circular current carrying conductor if say for example it has got a radius of say small r then the magnetic flux at the center will be say b equals to mu naught i divided by 2r right now if we do multiply and divide this expression with the length of this current carrying conductor so we intend to multiply and divide it by the length of this current carrying conductor now what is the length of this current carrying conductor basically is the length of the current carrying conductor is basically the perimeter of the circle so the perimeter of the circle will certainly be equal to 2 pi r which implies we can write this expression as mu naught i l divided by this l we are now taking it as 2 pi r so it will be 2 r multiplied by 2 pi r right now if we do perform the expression will certainly look like mu naught i l divided by 4 pi r square right now over here what we are doing now we are going to place at the center a bar magnet right now this bar magnet as we know it has got two poles say for example over here we wish to put the north pole of the bar magnet but the kind of bar magnet we are putting over here, this is infinitely long bar magnet which means that the south pole of this bar magnet is actually very very far from this region. Right? So the south pole is not actually affecting or getting affected by the magnetic flux or B at the center of the coil. Now for always for all bar magnets there is a term associated known as M, the small m. This M actually indicates the pole strength of the bar magnet. As we know that by characteristics of a bar magnet that either this is the north pole and the south pole both may attract or repel another magnet based on the criteria that whether light poles are being kept closer or the unlight poles are facing each other right but for a particular given bar magnet the M or the pole strength will be equal for North Pole 
as well as the South Pole, right? We could never see that the North Pole is attracting much and the South Pole is actually repelling very less. If the North Pole is attracting very much, the South Pole of that particular bar magnet will also repel that very North Pole which is faced closely with the same pole strength, right? So, at this center, if there is a, say, a B associated, so this bar magnet will obviously experience a kind of force. So, the force now, which is enacted on this bar magnet, or the north pole of this bar magnet, on bar magnet say for example this is the force on this bar magnet this will simply be equals to the B at this position or the magnetic flux density at this position multiplied by the pole strength right so this will be over here, this value of or expression of B could be replaced. So we will get it as mu naught I L M divided by 4 pi R square and let us give this as equation 1. Now from the Newton's third law of motion, we basically know that every action has got an equal and opposite reaction. Which means that if this coil is exerting a force on this bar magnet, the bar magnet will also exert a force on this circular coil. Now, there is no need to get surprised in this that how this could happen. Because since this is a bar magnet, so obviously there will be the magnetic lines of force around it. Which means that it will be creating a magnetic flux density at each and every point. Now we do wish to find out the magnetic flux density at any point which is kept, say for example, our distance away. Because the magnetic flux density which will be our distance away from this North Pole will be actually the force which is going to able to put a force on this. The opposite force. This was the force that was actually enacted by the coil on the bar magnet. Now the bar magnet has got its own V on magnetic flux density but it varies with distance so over here like say for example we wish to find out that what will be the magnetic flux density or the force being exerted over at this point we know first of all that the force that is being enacted like at a distance of R we could say it as now the opposite force on coil obviously this will be due to this bar magnet right this will simply be equals to B I L sine theta right now over here if we do observe that like the sine theta, the value of theta will simply be equals to 90 degree or pi by 2. So we can write it as B I L. Now what is L? L is the length of this coil. Right? So let us give it as equation 2. Now, if we do wish to understand that if there is any relation between say 1 and 2, yes obviously there is. Because this first equation gives us the force which is enacted on the north pole by the coil. And the second equation gives the force being, being enacted on this coil by this north pole. 
they are actually actions and reactions. So by Newton's third law of motion, the action and reaction will be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So magnitude-wise, we could obviously equate these two, right? So equating one and two, we shall be finding it as that B I L will be equals to mu naught I L M divided by 4 pi r square. Now closely observe over here that this i will cancel out this i and so like this l will cancel out this l leaving us the equation of b as equals to mu naught divided by 4 pi multiplied by m divided by r square right so over here what we can say is that if this b was at the center that is being generated by or produced by this coil we can say it say for example as b1 right and this force like this b or the magnetic plus density now at this point due to this bar magnet will be equals to b2 so this will be say for example b2 so we can write that this b2 now is equals to mu naught divided by 4 pi multiplied by m divided by r square where r obviously is the radius now over here we could understand one thing that if from now on we are asked say to find out that what will be the force exerted by this bar magnet over a distance of r meter simply the equation of that b, first of all the b, that will be equals to mu naught divided by 4 pi multiplied by m divided by r square. Now if we check like this that there are two bar magnets say for example over here it is north pole and over here also this is the north pole of another bar magnet so these two bar magnets are actually like different entities right and if we do wish to like say for example this is m1 or the pole strength of this particular bar magnet is equal to m1 let us say for example that this bar magnet is a and this bar magnet is B and the pole strength of the bar magnet B is equals to M2. Now as we know that the poles are not exactly at the end but near to the end. Right? But for this course of like the numericals or deriving the equation we do keep that this north pole is basically at the end and this north pole is also at the end so we could find out the distance between these two say for example the distance of separation between the spacing poles it is equals to say capital R right so now we could say that for this A bar magnet a certain magnetic flux density will be generated at this particular point right so the magnetic flux that is generated by the bar magnet A will simply be equal to mu naught divided by 4 pi 
multiplied by m. Now, what is the m of this bar magnet? Because see, over here the m was the pole strength of this bar magnet. So we need to find out the pole strength of this bar magnet, right? Is it multiplied by m1 divided by what is the distance of separation over here this was small r now the distance of separation is capital r so this is capital r square now this is the first equation what we get now as we could see over here that the force on a bar magnet force on one bar magnet will simply be equal to the B that is being generated by the other multiplied by the pole strength of that bar magnet that is now M2. So now we can say that the force on bar magnet B, this bar magnet B will simply be equals to this B A multiplied by the pole strength of this bar magnet B that is simply equal to M2 so multiplied by M2 now the expression will look like F on B due to A will simply be equals to let us replace this B A by this expression mu naught divided by 4 pi multiplied by M1 M2 divided by R square because this is equals to B A multiplied by M2 so now we found out that what would be the force on B due to A. Now, on the other side, if we do wish to find out that what would be the B or the magnetic flux density due to the bar magnet B over at this point, then again if you wish to see it will be B of B at this particular point will be equals to mu naught divided by 4 pi multiplied by M2 now because we are finding out the B due to this bar magnet over this point separated by a distance of capital R this will be equals to R square and if we do wish to find out the force on A due to B is simply equals to then it will be B of B multiplied by M1 this is B of B multiplied by M1 so the expression will look like mu naught divided by 4 pi multiplied by M1 M2 divided by R square which means that the force which is being enacted on one magnet over another is the same as is being enacted upon it by the other magnet because we could see that both the expressions are the same so this actually obeys the Newton's third law as equal and opposite reaction. Obviously, if there is no pole and no pole, they will repel each other by which force it will simply equal to mu naught divided by 4 pi as a constant multiplied by the multiplication of their pole strengths divided by the square of the distance of separation between them. So we can state that now this force of either attraction or repulsion, for example, this was South Pole, have had it been South Pole, so attraction would have been there, okay, but the force would have remained the same. So we can say that the force is basically now directly proportional to M1, is directly proportional to M2. 
or they are directly proportional to the pole strengths but is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them right this particular thing and the expression of this force is known as the inverse square law of force in magnetism right now to understand the magnetic dipole moment and like say what would be the dipole right say for example we take a bar magnet likewise this would be the north pole of the bar magnet and this would be the south pole of that particular bar magnet right so let us take the length of this bar magnet as equals to 2L. Now why we are taking it 2L? It would be defined in the subsequent lectures. And if you wish to put it L, I do not have any objection. But if you actually put in practice of putting this value as 2L, this will actually help in deriving various formulas and it will help you to solve numericals in a much more faster way. Right? So, if this is separated by 2L and it is said that the North Pole has a magnetic dipole moment of say M. Now, what will be the magnetic dipole moment? Uh, sorry, this is the pole strength M small m is the pole strength of this north pole so what will be the pole strength of the south pole simply it will be equal to m because for a particular bar magnet the north pole and the south pole both will have the same pole strength right but for different magnets the pole strength will be different right so, if this is the scenario in this case, we can find out the magnetic dipole moment. So, the magnetic dipole moment could be written as capital M. This magnetic dipole moment will simply be equals to the pole strength of any of this because it will be the same for both this multiplied by 2L or the length of this bar magnet. So we can say that the magnetic dipole moment of this is what? The magnetic dipole moment So, we can define the magnetic dipole moment as the multiplication of the pole strength of any of the pole multiplied by the like, length of that particular bar magnet. In the subsequent lecture now, we shall be discussing about that what will be say for example this M the value of the magnetic dipole moment or what will be the value of say for example the force on a particular bar magnet at a point which lies on the axis of this and at a point which lies on the perpendicular bisector of this so we shall be finding out the magnetic flux density the magnetic dipole moment and the force enacted at that point. Thank you.